Here's what's happening now. All the goodness that's out here with the sunshine and the mild temperatures is on its way out and we're going to get soaked. We'll show you how much rain we're expecting. Paula. I know this is a time of year we're always telling you to be aware of ticks and parasites for your pets, right? But this year, we're talking about being aware of ticks and parasites for their humans. Thank you, Paula. Also ahead, the FBI director grilled about the 2016 election and admits feeling mildly nauseous about one line of questioning. A doctor and his wife back in court today facing charges connected to female genital mutilation. What a judge is saying about them being released on bail. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. We start with breaking news this afternoon from Detroit's west side. Northbound M10 at Wyoming back open at this hour. It was closed earlier because of this crash. And as you can see here, two cars rolled over. This was on the freeway. It looks like at least three vehicles altogether were involved in the crash. No word on any injuries, but of course stick with Local 4 and click on Detroit for any updates on this breaking news. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sandra Ali in for Karen Drew today. Also first at four, the disturbing case surrounding charges of female genital mutilation. The couple indicted for allegedly performing that illegal procedure on young girls will not be able to post bail. Dr. Fahruddin Attar and his wife Farida back in federal court this afternoon. Both of them charged with female genital mutilation and conspiracy. The defense made a number of attempts to try and make it appear that Dr. Attar and his wife had nothing to do with those so called cuttings. In the end, the judge ruled there was probable cause to hold the two without bond until trial. A fire broke out this morning at a home in Bloomfield Township. Sky 4, this is over the home on Gulf Ridge a little after 8 this morning. This is in the area of Long Lake and Franklin. The fire burned through most of the roof, causing major damage to the house, as you can see there. People passing by the house saw the fire. They knocked on the door, waking the family up to get them out of the house. Luckily, no one was hurt. The cause of the fire at this hour is under investigation. Detroit police officers gathered this morning for the 44th annual Interfaith Memorial Service and March. A memorial car with the names of fallen officers was unveiled before the mass. Hundreds of officers marched through Greek town to the Interfaith Mass. Chief James Craig said he was touched by the memorial, especially right now, as the department continues to pray for their officers recovering from injuries they suffered while on duty. We have an officer who's recovering from his injuries. Just three weeks ago, two weeks ago, two officers were released from the hospital, recovering from their injuries, still recovering from their injuries. So this is a, a special day. They're my heroes. Each and every one of these officers that stand behind you, they're my heroes. The Detroit police officer who was shot in the head Sunday night remains in a medically induced coma. Get ready, soccer is coming to the D, and instead of building a new arena, the city is making use of what we already have. Today, officials announced a professional soccer match will be held at Comerica Park for the first time ever coming up on July 19th. European soccer clubs Paris Saint-Germain and AS Roma will play each other at the Tigers' home in the first match of the 2017 International Champions Cup. And if you're interested, fans, you can get your tickets for the game coming up starting on May 16th. Hopefully you are enjoying today's weather because it's about to take a turn. Ben Bailey stepped outside to enjoy the sunshine today, and I guess we better enjoy it now, right, Ben? Yes, uh, and take those sunglasses that you've been wearing today and just pretty much chuck them in the trash because over the next three days, we are going to get soaked, but it does look nice outside right now. Don't let the sunshine fool you, fool you because we're still below average. Temperatures just barely touching. 60 degrees in parts of the area and there's a little bit of a breeze out there but overnight tonight we'll see the clouds start to thicken up and once we get to about six o'clock in the morning the first of the rain starts moving into our south zone and then once it spreads on top of us Thursday looks like it's going to be a complete washout. Rainfall totals are impressive to say the least. We'll run through those and show you if we can finally get rid of this for the weekend all coming up in a few minutes. Sandra. All right, thank you, Ben. FBI Director James Comey back on Capitol Hill testifying for hours in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Kimberly Gill is in the newsroom now with his surprising comments about the Hillary Clinton email investigation. Kimberly? Sandra, good afternoon. Director Comey's trip to Congress came just one day after both President Trump and Hillary Clinton criticized him for his role in the outcome of last year's presidential election. During questioning, Director Comey came under fire from Democrats on the committee for his decision to talk publicly about the Clinton 
Clinton email probe while not saying anything about the Trump campaign and Russia. Comey talked in detail about the decision to reopen the Clinton email investigation just days before the election. It makes me mildly nauseous to think that we might have had some impact on the election, but honestly, it wouldn't change the decision. Everybody who disagrees with me has to come back to October 28th with me and stare at this and tell me what you would do. Would you speak or would you conceal? And I could be wrong, but we honestly made a decision between those two choices that even in hindsight, and this has been one of the world's most painful experiences, I would make the same decision. Director Comey also testified he believes Russia is still involved in American politics, something President Trump disputes. He also told senators he will not talk publicly about the Trump and Russia investigation until it is complete. So we'll continue to monitor it, monitor it for you. Until then, Sandra, let's send it back to you in the newsroom. All right. Thank you, Kimberly. The GOP health care bill has more support today in the House thanks to a new $8 billion amendment. Just 24 hours after saying he was against the bill, today Michigan Congressman Fred Upton and several other moderate Republicans say they now back the plan. They changed their stance after the $8 billion amendment was added. It would provide funding for patients with pre-existing conditions. And I support the bill with, the, with this amendment that's going to be included uh, as part of the rules package when we consider this likely tomorrow. They think they can dupe the American people by saying, well, we were going to eliminate pre-existing conditions, but now instead we're going to give you $200 if you have a pre-existing medical condition. Please. A vote, in fact, could happen as early as tomorrow, but if it doesn't happen this week, Republicans won't be able to schedule another vote until after an 11-day recess. We are tracking a murder-suicide on a college campus near Dallas, Texas. Two people are dead. The violence sparked an active shooter alert on the campus of Northlake College. Classes are now canceled for the rest of the day. Police say no one else was hurt. It was the second deadly attack, by the way, on a Texas campus just this week. First at four, we're on top of stories making headlines for you around the world at this hour. And we start today in South Korea. That's where protesters are very concerned about the new American anti-missile defense system. The system, called THAAD, is now operational and was quickly deployed because of the ongoing standoff with North Korea. Some South Koreans worry President Trump will order a preemptive strike against the North Koreans, and they will be the ones in the line of fire. Moving to Missouri now, historic flooding is expected to get worse and the death toll is now climbing. Take a look at some of this video here. This is from St. Louis County. Days of rain have already flooded hundreds of roads, homes, businesses. Authorities say they expect things to get worse as the river still need to crest. Two more deaths have now been blamed on the floods, bringing the total to five. Amtrak has suspended rail service across Missouri because of the flooding. Mother Nature is making tick season even more dangerous here in Michigan for people and their pets. And we're not just talking about Lyme disease either. Our Paula Tutman checked with experts, including our Dr. Frank McGeorge, on what you need to know to keep your family safe. I'm at Blue Pearl Veterinary Partners in Southfield, and it is a mammoth facility. They take care of all kinds of animals. I'm <laughs> like Pancake here, who's climbing all over me. And they've actually already seen their first cases of tick-borne diseases in animals, including a dog that died. Dory needs an exam. Dr. Jessica Romine is a vet for Blue Pearl Veterinary Partners, and she explains that dogs are not the only salad bar for ticks. Warm-blooded creatures are. Ticks have different hosts that they prefer, but in general they prefer warm mammals. So there's particular ones that live on deer, that live on mice, that live on foxes, skunks, any of those, but all of those ticks will also bite a dog, bite a cat, or bite a human if given the opportunity. This year, because of the two consecutive warm winters, ticks are surviving longer and migrating farther north, putting Michigan right in the crosshairs. Especially this last year, the ticks are able to survive for longer periods of time and on hosts that they wouldn't normally be able to, and so they can set up shop and live for a lot longer in these colder climates. Tom walks his dogs regularly along our state's beautiful trails. And while he does check his dogs regularly for ticks, he says he's really not so concerned about himself. I don't think you have to worry that much. This year, however, humans are being cautioned to check themselves as thoroughly as they check their pets. The official website of the state of Michigan warns of several emerging tick-borne diseases that will be a danger to humans this year. And by this year, we mean right now. Lyme disease, Southern Tick Associated Rash Illness, or STARI, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, 
ehrlichosis, and tularemia. And our own Dr. McGeorge warns of another tick-borne disease moving toward Michigan. One of the emerging diseases is called Powassan virus. That's a very severe virus that causes a brain infection and is really difficult to diagnose and can lead to death in 10% of the cases. If you find a tick on you or your pet, remove it quickly and properly. The best thing to do is to use tweezers and grab them right by the head, right by where their little, their little mandibles are in your skin. Grab firmly and pull straight back and just remove them that way. Don't smash them, don't suffocate them. That will more likely inject what's in them into you. But the best way to avoid tick-borne diseases is to do regular body checks. Of course, we always take care of our pets, but this year in particular, we have to take care of ourselves too. <laughs> right, Pancake, I got that. Paula Tutman, Local 4. Thank you, Paula, and Pancake, too. Local 4, by the way, bringing Metro Detroit animal lovers together with our All for Pets page. You can find stories about pet health, animal rescues, and local events. Just go to clickondetroit.com forward slash pets. Still ahead here today, first at four, a major airline making changes in the cabin, and in fact, it's going to affect your family's comfort level. We'll talk about that. Also, a double celebration for twin sisters who did something that really defies the odds. But up first, rush hour plane crash. This video, startling, but the biggest surprise is what didn't happen when it was all over. Killer up. Breaking news and this now just coming into our newsroom, a fight inside a classroom at Romulus High School and the scene was chaotic. Take a look at this here. We're being told one student was sent to the hospital. In fact, we're on the scene right now. We're gathering new information and we're also getting uh, details from eyewitnesses as well. We are working on a live report and we're going to have that for you coming up tonight at 5 o'clock. Look at this dramatic video here of a small plane crash. This is in Washington state. You just saw that right there. The plane clipping power lines, sparking those fireballs. This video comes to us from a dash cam. Well, just imagine sitting in rush hour traffic and watching that happen. The plane also leaked fuel on some cars as well. Luckily, the pilot is OK and no one was injured there on the ground. Unbelievable. Enjoy the legroom you have now on American Airlines because it is about to shrink. It's cutting the distance between seats from 31 inches to 30 inches on the new Boeing 737 Max jetliners. The cut is even worse in the last three rows as well, down to 29 inches. The space is shrinking as American tries to squeeze more seats into the cabin. And with the change, American becomes the first major carrier with seats similar to ultra low cost carriers, carriers like Spirit and Frontier. Also today, first at four, Bloomingdale's is avoiding a strike with new employee concessions. And we are getting some new details on that as well. But Bloomingdale's is now saying it has avoided the strike. The latest contract expired on Monday. And under the new four-year deal, sales clerks will not be required to prepare online orders for in-store pickups. Managers can also can't ask employees to leave their departments if they might lose a sale. Workers are concerned about losing commissions to online purchases. The union says the changes will help make up the difference. Well, Ben is back inside. You enjoyed that sunshine for a little bit at least. You just want to press pause. I you know. know. <laughs> just, just want to keep it, it for the rest of the week. It's beautiful out there today. It really is. And tomorrow is not only going to be colder and less sunnier, but it is going to be soaking wet. Uh, let's start first with the good news. Uh, if there is any out of this, the flood watches do not include us. Uh, flood watches extend all the way from northern Arkansas through the Mississippi Valley. And you can see that first tier of counties in southwest Michigan is pretty much where it stops. So even though we're technically not under a flood watch right now, it is possible that one could be issued because we are anticipating we're going to get some significant rain out of this system. But if you re may remember uh, last weekend, uh, let's just say the computer models weren't exactly uh, successful with predicting the amount of rain. And this is uh, setting up to be a similar case. There's no agreement between all of the different models we looked at. This is sort of a compromise. I still don't really like what it's putting out. I think that some of these higher totals are probably going to be striped 
right here across the east side. That's where we have at least the potential to see upwards of three inches of rain. I think a lot of us are going to see one to two and that gradient is going to be a lot tighter, meaning that there's going to be probably less so in the northern section of our west zone. And then those numbers will add up pretty quickly to the east side, which is going to get more or less continuous rain Thursday and maybe part of Friday as well. So let's show you where this system is right now. This is the leading edge of it, just not getting into central Indiana, but the low driving it is still down here in parts of Texas. Texas, so there's plenty of time to just uh, pile up moisture out ahead of that low, and that's what's going to happen as we get into the next three days. So the clouds are going to thicken up tonight, and then once we get into tomorrow morning, just about 6 a.m. or so, that's when we're going to start seeing that rain move into our south zone. And I want you to watch what happens over the hours going through Thursday. It is just solid rain through the entire day. And it doesn't look like we've got any dry spots there. Friday will probably uh, get a little bit less so as far as rainfall goes, but it's still going to be coming down and then not get finishing up really until the first part of Saturday. Low temperatures tonight, either side of 40 degrees and the clouds increasing again. Most of that rain not arriving until daybreak, and that's first going to be in our south zone. Let's look at high temperatures tomorrow in our four zone forecast close to 50. So that's about 10 degrees cooler than what we saw today. And you add on top of that, the lack of sunshine, the increased breezes, and it just is not going to feel pretty outside. 40s all over the place for highs tomorrow, including our west and north zone. At least we're going to escape the 30s in our north zone. So maybe, maybe that's some comfort for you. Uh, temperatures continue to be cool all the way through the start of the weekend. Then we start rising early next week. We will get some sun by the end of the weekend on Sunday, but three days here for Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Lots and lots of rain. Sandra. All right, thank you, Ben. Coffee lovers, this is for you. Starbucks has unveiled its newest summer drink. You might call it the anti-unicorn, and it's one of our trending stories today. But up first, two sisters who do everything together take their togetherness to a whole new level. Find out why April 28th will always be a big day for their family. In today's trending stories, a lot of people are talking about two new moms. The women are twins, and they both had babies on the same day in the same hospital. Growing up, we're like, it'd be so cool. You know, we're going to raise our kids together. We're going to have family together. We had never actually thought it would happen, like, together, even this close, the same day. Like, never thought that would happen. I love this story. What are the odds? The New Jersey girls both had boys last Friday. By the way, the odds of twin sisters giving birth on the same day are around 1 in 12,000. They also say they plan to have joint birthday parties and also dress the boys in matching outfits. They're probably going to hit the lottery. You, know you think that, right? so? I don't know if the boys are going to like that, but I think it's an adorable story. All right, well, forget the unicorn frappuccino and make way for this summer beverage here. Starbucks has created the Midnight Mint Mocha Frappuccino. It's made of two scoops of extra dark cocoa. It's blended with coffee, milk, and ice infused with mint sugar crystals, plus also the whipped cream you see right there. Also, the s'mores frappuccino has also returned. Sounds like a pretty sweet summer. What do you think of those? So it's a hot fudge sundae with coffee in it. Pretty much, and then a ton of <laughs> like whipped cream on top. The I mint mean, though is interesting. Yeah, I'll try, I'll try it yeah. once. Yeah, why not, right? It's the anti-unicorn, right. right? Well, moving from sweet to spicy, now Taco Bell has come up with something called the naked chicken chips. Ben, you might like this. You might try it. The wedge-shaped chicken tenders. This is uh, Taco Bell's entry into the fast food chicken nugget wars. They're also a follow-up to that naked chicken chalupa, which went away in March, which I heard was super popular. Uh, the chicken chips are going to be sold with some nacho cheese dipping sauce, and a six-piece will run you just $1.99, and they are are set to launch nationwide coming up on May 11th. And you can eat it on the go, so you check. Can. Would yeah. you try those? Absolutely. All right, so now I know what to bring you. <laughs> Still ahead, this video right here has been viewed more than 4 million times. You really need to see more of this firefighter's dance moves and also get the story behind the video. It's all coming up when we come back. Exposure. We're following breaking news from Detroit's east side where a school bus has crashed into an apartment building. This is happening on Charles Street near Mound Road. Of course, stay with Local 4. We are working to gather new information. No word just yet on any injuries or exactly what may have caused that bus to crash into the building, but we will stay on top of it. Finally, first at four, an Arkansas firefighter shows he can bust a move and his dancing is going viral. Take a look at what he does to the sounds of kung fu fighting. Everybody wants 
He was uh, <laughs> barely directing traffic during a dangerous storm. Said he's getting a little delirious after a long day. He's really getting into it. He decided to blow off steam, lighten the mood a little bit. It all ended up on social media, and now millions have seen his moves. It's going to be at the club soon. Uh, yeah, probably. Thanks so much for joining us today. First at 4, we'll see you for Local 4 News starting at 5.